Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. We often think about how if you work in a big factory, for instance, uh, you might feel like you're just a small cog in a big machine. And the question is, does anybody really notice the work you do? Are, are you forgotten in that factory with all the other people working? And of course, um, a big story hit the news recently in the automotive industry because one guy, one person, <laughs> caused a recall of a bunch of cars. And several people sent me notes about this, including Peter, Keith, Jason, and Donald. And uh, it's been widely covered, but it's something that really makes you think. It really makes you think. Because Subaru of America just issued safety recall report 21V-024 uh, through NHTSA. NHTSA, of course, is the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. And NHTSA mandates by federal statute that if a manufacturer of automobiles discovers a problem across a platform, several vehicles, that could be a safety-related issue. They've got to recall those vehicles and repair them for free. That means actually contact the owners and say, bring them in and we will fix them. And the recall notices are documents that get filed with the federal government. So you can see them at nhtsa.gov, nhtsa.gov. You can see these documents. And this document is 21V024. And it's issued by Subaru of America, Inc. And it came out January 26th, so very recently. Now, this only affects... 383 vehicles, 383. It's a good number, by the way. My Mopar fans know what I'm talking about. Uh, but about 40% of those 383 vehicles will have this problem. And you'll understand why in a second that we're guesstimating on this. Because there's no defective parts involved, which is often the case. This is an assembly issue. The person on the assembly line did something wrong as the 2021 Subaru Outbacks and Imprezas came down that line. And I'm thinking this line is in Lafayette, Indiana. If I'm wrong on that, please let me know. I did some research trying to figure out where Subaru builds the uh, Outbacks and the Imprezas. And it looks to me like they are, in fact, built in Lafayette, Indiana, which is a lovely town. I've been there many times. But here's the deal. The CVT select lever cable nut may have been under-torqued during vehicle assembly. There's <laughs> a whole bunch going on in that sentence. And, of course, this vehicle will have a CVT transmission in it. And then, of course, a continuously variable transmission. Don't need to worry about that so much because we're talking about the cable that runs between the selector and the transmission itself. And the nut that holds part of this together may have been under-torqued. And torque, of course, is a description of twisting force, right? So when you tighten a bolt down, if it's really, really critical that the bolt or nut be tightened down to the correct amount, you can use a thing called a torque wrench. Now, I'm not sure what kind of torque wrench they would have used in this assembly process, but apparently it is mission critical that this nut be torqued to a point where it will stay torqued. And that's the problem because, as you know, cars vibrate a little, both from just running and also from driving down the road. And over the life of a car... Some nuts and bolts should never come undone. Never. They should stay torqued. So apparently, the basis for this recall was determined as a single associate, which of course is a euphemism for a worker, assigned to a specific production line working between the production dates specified of December 14th and December 21st, one week, was found to be using an improper torque wrench technique. Now, again, we don't know if he's doing it completely wrong or just simply wasn't tightening him enough. But an improper torque wrench technique. All vehicles potentially affected by this associate are included in the identified population. Now, the vehicles that were not identified as part of that one-week production run, touched by that one associate, have been determined to have been properly torqued. Okay, The recall population includes certain 2021 model year Outback vehicles, and the number of potentially affected Outback vehicles is 314. But then, an identical one has been issued for the Subaru Impreza. The CVT select lever cable nut may have been under-torqued during vehicle assembly. And it's identical language. Potentially affected vehicles were identified using vehicle production records. A single associate assigned to a specific production line working between the production dates of 1214 and 1221 was found to be using an improper torque wrench technique. All vehicles potentially affected by the associate are included in the identified population. And so what happens is, is that if you have one of these vehicles, it's a 2021 Subaru Outback or Impreza, 
if you have one of these vehicles, uh, you, you will get a notice. But even if you don't want to wait or don't know if you've gotten notice or you're curious, you can go to NHTSA's website. And this is what's interesting about modern automobile production. If you go back the assembly lines that you know Henry Ford ran in Detroit a long time ago, uh, there were cars coming down an assembly line, and they were just getting built. I don't think they were tracking them so closely as to be able to tell this one came down the assembly line uh, during this shift and was touched by this guy, this guy, this guy, but not those guys on the other shift. I don't know that they kept those kind of records. Nowadays, data drives everything. So they apparently identified a problem where the nut came loose, the shifter didn't quite work right, they identified it, taken it to the dealership, oh, this nut just came loose, no big deal, they tighten the nut. Somebody else has the same problem, and red flags go up. Now, I don't know how many times it would have to go up for them to flag it, but somebody notices. So the first thing they're gonna do is look at it and go, is there a problem with the assembly itself, the noun, the assembly, okay? Is there a problem with the nut? Is there a problem with what the nut goes on to? Is there a problem with the cable? Is, is there something wrong manufacturing or design-wise? And then they apparently realized, oh, all of these vehicles came down the assembly line during this one particular shift that week, <laughs> okay? Not on the same days necessarily, but all during one particular shift. And apparently this is the kind of task on the assembly line that one guy does. So one guy stands there and his job is, and he might have other jobs, but, but one of his jobs is to tighten the nut that holds that cable in place and, and then torque it to the proper torque specifications. And that torque specification has been set up by engineers that that'll hold for the life of the vehicle. So they find several of these that are not torqued properly and they all came from that one guy touching them. So they go, okay, that's the problem. And then apparently they went and found some preceding that week and following that week and didn't have the problem. So we can read some into this. It might be that this guy started the job that first day of that week and at the end of the week somebody figured out what was going on and straightened it out. Uh, or there could be other things going on, but they, they have narrowed it to the one week window of time, okay? And it appears that it was simply caused by the guy doing something wrong. So it says the improper torque techniques, uh, and it's hard to say what that could mean. It could be that he was simply using uh, a, a wrench or a ratchet to tighten that nut down without checking a torque spec. Or it's possible that he was using the wrong wrench I don't know. That's you know. Well, I I don't I don't know what this nut looks like. I, I'm just you know thinking out loud here. And for those of you who don't know, and I and again I know there's car guys in the audience who are going to go, Steve. I know about this. I know you do. I know you do. But torque specifications can be very very important in some settings. Other settings are not quite so important. But oftentimes when you're say rebuilding an engine, in the manual for rebuilding an engine, it'll often say there's certain places where it's extremely important that you torque the bolts or the nuts down to a certain amount, and if you don't, bad things will happen. Best example is the uh, bolts that hold down the head, the, the cylinder heads that get bolted onto the engine block. There will often be a whole bunch of bolts that do that, and so they'll actually tell you that not only is it important how tight you make them, it's important in what order you tighten them, and there's usually a, a bolt tightening pattern, and then you use a torque wrench to tighten them. And, and the torque wrench, think of a big, long-handled ratchet, okay? And so there's the, the thing here that goes on top of the, the bolt or the nuts, depending on what, what you're turning. Big, long handle, and you tighten it by doing this. Well, on the back of the wrench, on the back of this tool, is a needle. And the needle sits over a little, almost like a little graph or a little, you know, thing with, with, with grade marks on it. And they're marked as pounds, feet, how many pounds per foot you're exerting on the handle. And some of them, they call it foot pounds, but pounds, feet, either way. I'm not going to get into that. There's actually a different preference. And so it'll say that you tighten it to so many pounds, feet. And so you get the bolt tight, and, and then when it gets tight and it doesn't want to move anymore, you then wrench a little more, and you do it to where that needle moves to right where you need it, and then you stop. And that is where you put the 
nut or the bolt exactly to the correct torque specifications. And there are some places where torque specs are actually called for and people ignore them. And there's other places where, like I said, it's, it's critically important with, with head bolts. Um, and apparently it's critically important with the select lever cable nut uh, on the uh, Impreza's and the, um, um, what's the other one? The, the Impreza and the Outback. Extremely important. Um, I can't imagine that you're going to reef that bolt down or that nut down as, 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 as hard as you're going to reef down a head bolt <laughs> on a hammy. I don't know. I can tell you that I've seen some uh, owner's manuals that suggest you use torque specs on your lug nuts. And I've changed wheels on cars many, 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 many times. Too many to count on my own cars, other people's cars. I changed some. I, I, I saw a teenager by the side of the road last summer, the flat tire, and he was confused. And I got out and I had a bottle jack in my truck and I jacked his car up and I helped him change his tire. Uh, so I have no idea who the guy was. But the thing is that I've seen torque specs given for lug nuts, but uh, you're out on the side of the road and you're just using a breaker bar. You, you, you tighten to where they feel right. And, and guys who've changed wheels and tires and rims and so on know that you can do that. You just do the right pattern as you tighten them. But, you know, uh, actually using a torque wrench on them. But um, I've also seen them use a torque wrench when they're in a shop and it's a high-end car and, and they've got the torque wrench and so on. But this is a safety recall. What's interesting, again, 383 cars came down the assembly line during this time period. They've identified the cars. They know the VINs of the cars. And they were all Outbacks or Imprezas. And they guesstimate that about 40% of them have the nut improperly torqued. And as a result of that, you need to take the car into a dealer, tell them about the recall. They'll run it, make sure that it's correct. And then they will break out the torque wrench. They will access that nut wherever it may be, and they will torque it down properly. And once it's torqued down properly, it should be good to go. It should be good to go. So it's Safety Recall Report 21V-024 from NHTSA. Subaru of America issued it for the 383 uh, Outbacks and Imprezas that crossed the assembly line at exactly the moment that the guy was using the torque wrench improperly. <laughs> And I bet his friends are ribbing him right now, as we say. So there you go. Thanks a lot, Peter, Keith, Jason, and Donald. Questions or comments, put them below. I'll just talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. Inside every cynical person, there's a disappointed idealist.